Hi guys, my name is Carrie Lopez, and today I'm going to be talking about blood bank reagents. Um, now, I do have a video that's going to be separate for any kind of antibody reagent, um, including like your monoclonal versus polyclonal, monoclonal or um, monospecific and polyspecific. Um, so everything regarding that is going to be on a separate video by itself, and everything else will be on um, today's blood bank reagent video. I'm going to go ahead and share the Word document. You can either take your own notes or um, just listen. The blood reagents. Now there are four categories general categories. There's going to be um, red blood cells. If known, is it, do you know if it's known antigen or antibody? Your red blood cells. Your red blood cells um, are always going to be known antigens. Then you've got anti-sera, if known, that's yeah, going to be antibodies. And then there's anti-globulin reagents. And these are going to include your anti-IgG and or complement. So, um, IgG is going to be anti IgG, and then it's going to be and or complement, which will be your anti D3D or anti D3B. Then you will also have um, what are called potentiators. And all they do is um, they enhance reactions. Now your reagents are going to be regulated. Do you know who they're regulated by? They are going to be regulated um, by the FDA which is a Food and Drug Administration. Um, the criteria is found in the Code of Fed Federal Regulation. Oh my goodness, I couldn't get that out. Um, it's found in the Code of Federal Regulation. Um, all the reagents must meet standards license. Um, and examples of these standards are um, specificity and potency. So your specificity is going to be um, whether the reagent um, can recognize um, the antigenic determinant and the corresponding antibody. So recognition of antigenic determinant and corresponding antibody. Now your other one is going to be potency. which is referring to the strength, and more specifically, um, to the strength of the reaction. 
Um, so in our case, in blood bank's case would be whether it's a one plus two plus reaction or a three plus four plus reaction. And you can always check the package, package insert to tell whether or not you're supposed to be getting three plus four plus or um, what reaction uh, works best with their reagent. And the man, manufacturer's um, inserts are always your go-to for that. But these are some important definitions to know. Now, your QC, always an important aspect of any kind of lab program. Um, it determines the accuracy and precision of equipment, reagents, and procedures. So there's a statement of criteria um, for acceptable reagent performance. Um, that can be referred to for QC. Um, there's, you have to document use. So that's a requirement. And then um, there has to be a list of corrective actions. Uh, these are for a lack of performance. Uh, so if it's not working the way it says it should, um, there should be corrective actions that you could take to fix the problem. And then um, always, again, always check the package insert. So, package insert. because that will be your go-to. Oh, no, I don't see red. Now, the antibody reagents, they put at the beginning, but um, you can check out my antibody reagents video um, with Lab Mama on YouTube, all in one word. And um, since that was kind of a larger section, I broke it off into its own video. So we're not going to talk about it on here, but no, there are antibody reagents. And um, that's something that's important to know about as well. But I'm going to go ahead and skip to your ABO forward typing. Now, what reagents are you using for forward typing? Um, that's going to be your anti-A or anti-B. So, you know, you're using anti cr because you're looking for um, an unknown antigen. So, you're looking for the antigen that is on the um, patient or donor red blood cells. So, the opposite of your... Um, of your unknown antigen is going to be a known antibody, which is your reagent antisera. And if that you find confusing at all, you can check out the ABO video as well. Now both antisera. are directed towards specific antigens. So, anti sera is directed towards specific antigens.
for example, your anti-A, what's that going to be directed against? going to be towards your A antigen, and then your anti-B is going to be directed towards your B antigen. And then um, an extra little note, your anti-A, so your, um, your anti-series are generally uh, colorless, so they're going to be clear. But often they are, um, certain ones are dyed certain colors. That way uh, it's harder to get them confused or mixed up. Or if you put them in the tube, um, it kind of dyes it a little bit. So you know whether or not you added the reagent. And so anti-A is always going to be blue. And anti-B is always going to be yellow. And that's universal across any manufacturer. And again, if you've forgotten whether you put, the, um, put any drops in the tube, then you know. Um, both of these are um, murine monoclonal antiseras. And if you're like, what in the world is that? You can check out the antibody video um, or look up the difference in like your monoclonal and polyclonal and your human versus your mouse or murine. Um, they are going to yield strong reaction. And that means they're going to be 3 plus or 4 plus. Uh, in reference to the tube method, they are performed initial spin or immediate spin and um, that is going to be like your room temperature phase. Now your confirmation for forward typing is going to be to check for ABO antibodies. Um, which is your reverse typing. So right now you're looking for um, your unknown antigen. So your confirmation is going to be to check for ABO antibody, which is your reverse typing or reverse grouping. Now ABO reverse. Typing and some books call them three things, but um, it's the same thing, just whatever term you are accustomed to or that your book is using. So your ABO, ABO reverse typing, what reagents are you going to use there? Well, it's going to be the opposite of your forward typing. And um, if you know that you are checking for ABO antibodies, um, then that's your unknown antibody. So you need the opposite, which is going to be a known antigen. And your known antigen is going to be reagent because it's known RBCs for your antigen. Commercial red blood cells contain known antigens to confirm the presence of antibodies in patient serum or plasma. Plasma. So commercial red blood cells. A known antigen to confirm the presence of antibodies in patient here in plasma. And again, whenever you're running these tests, you need one known, one unknown and then one red blood cell and one um, anti sera and then you need one um, antibody and one antigen. Now, if you have one red blood cell and one anti sera then you're already gonna have your one antibody and one antigen. 
and um, all that helps to try to figure out all these steps. Now your reagent red blood cells are also used in antibody screens. Now, when we're talking about um, like our A1 and B cells, patient, can possess an antibody directed against the antigen of the ABO system that is lacking on their red blood cell. So patients possess the antibody antibody directed against the antigen of the ABO system that is lacking on their red blood cells. So that is why um, your reverse, your results are switched compared to your forward typing. Um, if they have the antigen, that's what they type as. Um, so it's straightforward. And this one is was seemingly backwards because if they um, if they possess the antibody, it means that they do not have that antigen, so they can make an antibody against it. we've got A1 and B cells. So your A1 cells. Are going to be um, directed towards your anti-A antibody. And then your B cells are going to be directed towards your um, anti B. They are from a uh, single donor or donor pools. So they can either be from single donor or donor pools, which means uh, multiple donors together. And then they are resuspended to a two to five percent concentration and put in a nice little um, nice little tube for you. Now something um, really important about your reagent red blood cells is that they need to be well mixed. Now it can cause problems if you vigorously shake them. So you're supposed to like gently swirl them or invert them and then you can check the bottom um, of the vial for uh, the, for those, there's like a darker red spot if you look at it um, before you start inverting it or mixing it and um, that diminishes the, the more you mix it. So check to make sure that there's not still a um, darker button on the bottom of the vial. They need to be well mixed. Not vigorously. Um, they are negative for RH antigen, for 
all our HMSism. And um, you are not to use them. If they are, um, if they have darkened, they should be the same pretty reddish color that they normally are. Um, if they agglutinate in the vial, or if they show hemolysis. You know, smear test hemolysis is considered a positive, so you want that to be an actual um, testing reaction and not due to an issue with the reagents. Now, our next one is going to be um, squalene cells. And they are used in antibody detection tests for unexpected antibodies. They come in sets of two or three vials, which is the difference um, in the panels that come um, in a range of 10 to 20 vials. Now they can also be um, single donor or pooled uh, between two donors. Um, now, um, a note for these is that um, your single donor um, yields stronger reactions. And it also um, can be used on the donor or recipient testing. However, your pool can be used for um, the donor testing only. Each lot has a specific antigram. You cannot use um, an antigram from a different lot. Um, you can not use an antigram from a different lot. So you cannot use an antigram from a different lot. What does this mean? This means. that you need to guard it with your life or make a copy. So guard your life. Or you can make a copy. And I think that's generally suggested whenever you um, get a new lot in or um, receive any supplies to just go ahead and take that antigram and make a copy and put it in a binder somewhere. That way, if that one gets messed up or lost um, or destroyed in whatever way, unusable in whatever way, you have a copy to use and go off of.
And let me go ahead and show y'all an example. The button I need is right where the end share button is. Okay. There we go. So here's an example of an infogram. So it'll tell you um, what specifics um, it has and in reference to any of the um, clinically significant antigens. And then your panel cells are gonna be like that, but way bigger. So instead of two or three, there's going to be about 10 to 20, depending on the manufacturer and which one it's for and um, a bunch of different little technicalities. Okay. Now um, our next one is your panel cell. And again, your panel cells are going to be um, the same as your screening cells, but 10 plus vials are used to identify antibodies on a deeper level. And it's Thanks. going. Nope. And it's going to be used to identify antibodies on a deeper level. I'm working. Huh? I'm working. Oh. And so um, all the things we put up for screening cells um, are also going to apply to the panel cells. Now our next one that we're going to talk about is your um, antiglobulin test. And they shorten that to AGT. So commercial antibody with a specificity towards human globulins is used to agglutinate antibody coated red blood cells. So commercial antibody is used to agglutinate antibody coated red blood cells and then 
starting my other to make it a bullet point or go ahead and put it here. I think I'll include it in here. So commercial in the body. Or human globulin. is used to agglutinate antibody-coated um, red blood cells. Now, if it makes more sense for you, you can um, put with the specificity toward human globulins as a bullet point, or has a specificity toward human globulins as a bullet point um, underneath it instead. Now your reagents contain either um, anti-IgG or anti-C3D or anti-C3B. Um, so either or or anti-IgG, anti-C3D. Or, or anti C three B. What this is referring to is it is either um, antibody toward IgG. Company. Now, some types of uh, antiglobulin testing. Um, one is going to be the DAT, which is your direct antiglobulin test. And what that does is detect IgG or complement bound to red blood cells in vivo. Now, what is your in vivo? Is that going to be in the body or in the lab? It's going to be in your body. And then in vitro, it's going to be in the lab. So the DAT, the PET, IGT, and what's our other one? Our complement. Going to red blood cells. In vivo. It's going to be in the body. Then you have um, an AHC, which is anti human globulin reagent, added after washing the red blood cells. Now, when you, when you um, perform your DAT, you use polyspecific um, reagent to screen. Um, and then you would use monospecific to know if the globulin is IgG or complement. So you use monospecific. Determine if a uh, globulin is IgG or complement. And then just a quick overview again, um, you've got your monospecific versus polyspecific. In, um, in my antibody reagent video, um, however, your monospecific versus um, your specific versus clonal is going to be the monoclonal and polyclonal, or how the anti serous are made, and then your monospecific versus polyspecific is what antibody the serous uh, the sera is directed towards. So these are referring to the specific and what antibody that they are directed towards. Okay, 
oxygenation is going to be a positive reaction. Um, and that means that NPG, the complement, um, attached to the, the blood cell. Your some examples are transfusion reaction. This is going to be IgG. It's always clinically significant. Your body temperature, 27 degrees. And then you've got hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. Um, that one is also going to be an IgG because it crosses the placenta. Then you've got um, autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So autoimmune um, hemolytic anemia and can either be uh, IgG or your C3. And then um, another example is your CHD, uh, which stands for cold hemagglutinin disease, and that one will be complement. Now another test example is your IAT, um, which is your indirect antiglobulin test, and what it does is detects IgG or complement bound in vitro. Complement down and again to the red blood cells, but this one's going to be in vitro. Now, what does in vitro mean? That's going to be in the lab or outside the lab. So, your difference in the DAT versus IAT is going to be whether um, the complement is bound in vivo or in vitro. So with this, um, you will have serum antibodies incubated at 37 degrees. So your serum, which um, contains your antibody, incubated 37 degrees. And that is going to be your body temp. Red blood cell antigen. In vitro. The red blood cell suspension is washed um, and combined with a key to detect agglutination. And then I always like little arrows um, to point out, you know, that something's happening but you can put and or then or whatever you do. Your tutoring session. This will wash and then combine with AHP. Then we talked about polyspecific and monospecific. So monospecific oh, I'm missing one of here. I just can't type tonight. So monospecific anti-IgG um, to avoid fold complement binding clinically significant antibodies. So monospecific anti IgG. is to avoid cold binding clinically significant 
and the bodies. Now, some other reasons you would do um, an IAT is going to be um, an antibody screen. And what those do is detect antibodies with specificity to red cell antigens. So detect antibodies. Specificity. Red cell. Antigens. And um, if any point, man, I don't know what that means. Um, you can go back and check or check in your book. And so I think I'm going to go back here and check specificity again so we remember what that is. Your specificity is the recognition of antigenic determinant and the corresponding antibody. So that it does indeed react with the antigen it says it will or the antibody that it says it will. Another one is going to be an antibody ID. Um, it IDs, identifies the specificity of red cell antibodies. So if you're like, you've done the panel, you've done the screens, they're like, I think it's this one. Or you might think, okay, I've got it narrowed down to these three. Then you can do an antibody ID with the Sierra and check um, which one um, it certainly is. Because again, you want to be certain in blood bank. You've got all kinds of um, checks and counter checks and balances and to make sure that it's being done properly. It's really easy um, to make a mistake and to um, mistakes in blood bank can kill a patient really fast. We've got a cough mask. And what that is, is serological compatibility between the donor and patient before transfusion. So serologic compatibility between donor and patient before transfusion. So that's pretty much doing like a test can transfusion um, in vitro in the lab in a tube. And if you have any kind of, um, of reaction in that tube, you can most certainly count on um, the patient having a reaction to it as well. So again, it's just another check because you could have a, you know, perfect ABO antibody screen um, match that for whatever reason, causes a reaction in the patient. So it's just one more extra step to try to prevent that. Um, and then there's also antigen typing. And that ID identifies specific red cell antigen in the patient or donor. Now, some of these use um, reagent red blood cells. Um, some have, like your cross match uses donor red blood cell with your recipient plasma. And then um, like your antigen typing uses anti-sera. And so they all use different things, but they're all part of indirect antiglobulin testing. And now it can be um, also IgG or complement. And I'm going to scoot this down one because I want these all together. So you use coded check cells to confirm the 
a negative test. So coded check cells to confirm your negative test. So you know that it's not negative because nothing's reacting. You know that it is indeed um, a negative, a, a, a certain negative, not a false. And so what this confirms is that AHV um, does not neutralize um, due to insufficient washing. So in case anyone asks you about the logistics of that, know that um, coded check cells are used to um, confirm negative tests and know that the HG was not neutralized due to insufficient washing. Now I'm going to include the false negative and false positive uh, charts. And false positives first. Okay, so our um, common sources of false positive error in anti-globulin testing is um, your red cells are agglutinated before a washing step and um, addition of the anti-human globulin or AHG reagent. And so the explanation would be um, the potent cold reactive antibody of the patient origin. Um, use of dirty glassware can um, have particles or contaminants. And then improper centrifugation or over centrifugation, that means centrifuging it longer than you should have, um, can cause a red cell button packed uh, so tightly on the centrifugation that non-specific clumping can be dispersed, cannot be dispersed. Um, now your false negative error in your um, AGT is going to be failure to wash cells adequately during the test procedure before the addition of AHB reagent. Um, testing is interrupted uh, or delayed. A HG reagent is not added immediately after washing. Failure to identify weak positive reactions. Loss of reagent activity. Um, failure to add A HG reagent altogether. Um, and I do believe that A HG is often um, a green color, so you can tell whether or not you've added it. Um, so it's dyed to um, kind of help prevent that from, from happening. Um, improper centrifugation or under centrifugation. Again, you know, under centrifugation can cause a problem as much as over centrifugation. Um, labs need to be specific. And then there's the uh, inappropriate red cell concentrations or red cell suspensions fall outside of the optimal two to five percent. Next thing we're going to talk about is oops, going to be antiglobulin reagents. There are a couple different kinds. There are polyspecific which contain um, anti-IgG and anti-C3D. And just for poly, it's many. I can't remember which one is which.
derived from monoclonal or polyclonal sources. Monoclonal is going to be um, hybridoma te uh, technology part, which targets a single epitope. Mono, single, and then you've got um, polyphonal and um, you have inoculated animals targeting different epitopes. Poly. For um, different epitopes, and then you've got mono for single epitopes. Um, your positive or agglutination, so agglutination. means that. IgG or complement is coding the red blood cells. And it's really good to know um, not just like that glutination is a positive reaction, but the terms for it as well. So that um, what that means is that IgG or complement is coding the red blood cells. And a lot of times we get asked questions that are a little bit more specific, and um, that's what it's talking about. That was poly specific. Now we've got mono specific. And that contains anti IgG or complement, which can be either anti C3D or C3D. Or the both going to be your company. Um, now these can also. Can be blended to ensure detection of all epitopes. So, can be blended to ensure detection of all epitopes. Now, another thing we use is going to be. Um, for IgG sensitized cells, IgG sensitized cells. Um, now these are going to be commercial type O red blood cells. Commercial type O RBCs, and um, they are prepared with IgG antibodies attached to them. IgG. They are going to be your um, control when AHC is negative. So, 
been added um, to a negative AHG test, positive agglutination should occur. A negative AHG test, positive agglutination. We have false negatives. Um, what can happen is no H AHG was added. And if anyone can remember why I said that this is um, what they did, uh, the manufacturers did to kind of eliminate this problem. Um, so what they did is they dyed it green. I believe it's green. Um, so you can tell when you look in the tube, um, if it has a greenish tint to it, you know you've added the AHD. So the AHD didn't react, or red blood cells were not adequate, adequately washed. So you always have a um, check for that. No, then we talked earlier about potentiators and that they enhance agglutination. So they enhance the reaction. And there's a few different types of them. Uh, since that dropped it down to a new page, I'm going to put them all on a new page. That way they're all together. So. Um, the first kind I'm going to talk about is going to be albumin. So bovine albumin. Uh, bovine is referring to cows. Um, and then this is also called um, BSA, uh, which stands for bovine serum albumin. The lab, and they just couldn't call it one thing. So what this does is um, reduces repulsion in cells, but does not shorten the incubation time. Not shorten the incubation time. Um, it favors direct agglutination with RH antibodies. So it favors direct agglutination with RH antibodies. And then, um, what this one in between? Um, it enhances sensitivity of the IAT. Like anything that is kind of related together, closest together, help you remember them a little bit. And I like picking out all the fluff. So any kind of, you know, word that you don't need need that you can still read it and it and it sounds the same is good. So all the little words that it, um, yeah, I think of it really come across it. Um, now it allows antibody sensitized cells to become closer together um, than they could with saline. So I think that's an easier to remember than even reduces repulsion between cells. Um, so it allows antibody Cells two. Two is a word that is not necessary. And, and that's referring then um, with just saline.
Now, um, it only is an important note for it. Only increases antibody uptake if under low ionic conditions. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about is your low ionic strength saline, um, and it is referred to as LIF. So that is going to be your low ionic strength saline. Now, what that does is um, it increases the rate of antibody uptake. And again, I like arrows. One extra word to take out. So it increases the rate of antibody. And it allows for a decreased incubation time. Increase the rate of um, antibody uptake and allows a decrease decrease in incubation time. The next one is your PEG. Now PEG stands for polyethylene glycol. Polyethylene And what this one does is it concentrates the antibody. Concentrates antibody. And how it does that is it increases the antibody. To increase the antibody uptake, it removes water, um, which increases the antibody concentration. So. Increases antibody uptake. By removing water. Um, and that increases the antibody concentration. Next one I'm going to talk about is um, your enzyme. And now your enzymes can consist of papains, um, they can be fysin, thin, or bromelain. So when you ever hear papain treated or fysin treated, um, it's referring to these enzymes. And so they remove a negative charge from the red blood cell membrane. So it removes negative charge from RBC membrane. Um, and now that promotes agglutination. And I 
like arrows. So what that does. Now, what it also does is um, decreases the zeta potential. And if you're like, oh my gosh, what's that? Don't worry, I was about to show you. decreases your zeta potential. And what I have found for that, in just a moment, is my favorite Googled information about zeta potential. Um, so zeta potential measurements to improve the formulation stability and shelf life, and then reduce formulation time and cost. So the zeta potential is a measure of the magnitude of the electrostatic or charge, um, which is your repulsion and attraction between particles and is one of the fundamental parameters known to affect stability. So what does all that mean? It affects the stability. Go back to our Word document here. So decreases zeta potential, and um, it denatures some red cell antigens. And what does denatures mean? It means it destroys them. So it denatures some red cell antigens. Um, and some examples of those that are destroyed when treated by enzymes are M, N, your M and S, M and N. Then you've got your um, Duffy, so that can be F Y A and F Y B. And um, I've got a nice little picture. I am all about pictures, and I get these all from different sources. So whether they're from um, blood bank books, or um, one of my favorite sources is um, the Clinical Lab Science Review, um, a bottom line approach. And um, that one I think is just really awesome for every kind of lab program, whatever course you're in. Okay, so remember your enzymes, PB bison, the lumberjack. So PB bison, the lumberjack is for papain. Bromelin, bison, and trypsin, PB, bison, and then the. And then um, when you get into um, more specific antibodies and um, their enhancements or their what the nature of them, um, then here's a nice little chart with um, PB, bison, the lumberjack, and um, what is enhanced and what branches he cuts down. Okay, here we go. Now our next one is going to be oh, lectins.
don't think that needs to be. I know I had that one in. Yeah, because those were all potentiated. I was like, enzymes should be by themselves. But no, those are all potentiated. So our lectin, what in the world are lectins? They are going to be feed extracts that have specificity. towards certain red blood cell antigens. You ever wonder who comes up with this? Like, who was like, I'm going to test this one specific plant seed and see if it helps people in blood bank. So what this means is that They agglutinate human cells with some degree of specificity. So, simply meaning they agglutinate human cells with some degree of specificity. And um, I think I included which enzymes um, are denatured, but I did not um, mention ones that. Um, that are enhanced. So our enhanced ones are going to be um, more of your RH, uh, Lewis, and then your KID, which is going to be your JKA and JKB. And I always remember those because kids joke around a lot because your KID. JKA and JKB. And then your warm or cold autoantibody. So warm, cold autoantibodies. Sorry about that. Now, lectins are seed extracts that have specificity towards certain red blood cell antigens. And so that means that they agglutinate human cells with some degree of specificity. And again, if you can't remember what specificity is, look it up, because it's better than just not knowing and moving forward like that. So specificity is the recognition of antigenic determinant and the corresponding antibody. And even if you have to like go and type it again or write it off the side of the paper or whatever you need to do, um, to remember things. Now there's a few different kinds. Um, there's going to be the Delicia, Bifloris, Um, it agglutinates A1 or A1B. A1 and A1B. Um, it is the source of anti-A1, um, which is also called anti-A1 lectin. Source of anti, I'm going to copy and paste this one. So I don't have to read. Anti-A1, um, which is also referred to as anti A1 lectin. Okay, I'm going to have to do it in here. Okay. 
head up. Make it all up. So, so your Dolichos by Flores is your source of anti-A1 um, or your anti-A1 lectin. Um, another one is not much easier to spell or pronounce. It is ULEC, E-U-R-O-P-A-E-U-S. So ULEC, Europus. And now that one, the glutinate, um, your O cells. Now, um, if you don't know, that is your H specificity. And I got a video on your um, ABO antigens that talks more about um, about H and its specificity. And um, here in a little bit, I will put um, the order of the amount of H that is in um, each given um, ABO antigen. Oh, and it's also in um, other ABO groups. O blood group. Other Depending on the amount of H antigen available. Now, what does that mean? That means um, it starts with just a moment. I want to stop the share and share it again just to make sure that um, y'all will still be able to see the same screen that I wanted you to. to make a long video and then it all be for nothing because you couldn't see if I had done before. Okay, so um, this is referring to the amount of H antigen available and so I'm going to put uh, greatest amount of H going to be on this side. And then over here, I'll put the least. See if I can go ahead and fit in a map. I can work out, but this is one that's important to know what it's talking about. Your Ulex Europus um, agglutinates your O cells with H specificity, and then your other ABO blood groups, depending on the amount of H antigen available. So, your greatest amount of H is going to start with O. So, group O have the greatest amount of H. And then um, followed by A2, B, A2B, A1, and the least amount is A1B, with the least amount of H. Damn, this thing is getting super highlighted now. Maybe. 
Okay, so now our next one is um, is going to be our um, Vishya Ramenia. Your guess is as good as mine about how to properly pronounce that. So that agglutinates the in antigen. So it has in specificity. And then our last one is going to be Iberic Amara. And that one agglutinates um, the M antigen. Um, so that's referring to M specificity. And um, if you are a picture person instead, Oh, I guess I didn't think, but it is right now. Um, and it looks the same. So O is the greatest, then A2, then B, then A2B, then A1, and A1B. And so these are our lectins, and that wraps up all of our blood bank reagents that you would use. And I hope this clears up a lot of questions um, and information, and especially as you are Reading through the book, having this background will um, will really help y'all um, understand what's going on and not be so overwhelmed by all the information you're receiving um, because that can happen really easily as well and um, you know make you not think that you are as smart as smart as you in fact are. Um, so check out the other videos too. Thank you.